Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This is a very quick how-to episode and the how-to is on how to fit a new three-fold clasp. Uh, there'll be a lot of people out there have got these sort of watches. They're on loads and loads of different types and uh, sometimes they fail and you need to get a new one and I'm going to show you how to choose one, how to get it right and then of course how to fit it. I uh, just thought I'd film this very quickly really because I've come to do this one on my own watch here and it's got a particular problem and I thought well why not show you guys how to do it just in case you don't already know. So without further ado we're going to cut to the bench and I'll show you this watch, show you the problem and then talk you through what we're going to have to do and then show you where we can buy them and how to choose the right one which I think I've already said but I've said it again. <laughs> so okay over to the bench here we go. Right, okay, here we are. Can anyone guess what brand of watch I might be about to show you? Seiko, what a surprise. This is a pretty cool uh, early digital. Actually, it's from 1976. It's uh, 0639 uh, 5007, I think, from memory. Yeah, 5007. So very early, uh, 1976, pretty good. Uh, I've restored this one, polished the sides. Um, replaced the crystal and uh, rebrushed the front here and uh, I want to wear it. Uh, the trouble is I found out this. So here's the three-fold clasp as we call them and I go to close it and the top part does not reach the bottom part or the bit it fastens onto. Now why is that? It's a blooming good question. It's almost like it's been put on the wrong way around to me but it can't really be. Um, uh, because of the way the, the end links seem to work on this thing. So when it actually came to me, uh, this watch, uh, this pin here was actually in one of these holes down here in order for it to reach. And that shouldn't happen. It should always be in the end one because that's what helps it bind and uh, fasten properly. It's also battered, as you can see here, and it's bent. So it's even been splayed out on the sides in order to accommodate the bracelet. So it's not very good at all and um, I can only really assume that this is the wrong one. Uh, somebody's at some point fitted a different one and it's uh, obviously a make do. So we're going to correct that and how do we do that? So um, what I've actually done is I've done a little um, screenshot of going to Cousins website to uh, show you all the different ones that you can buy but uh, and I might re be repeating myself here before you've even seen that bit, but I'll just give you a little bit of a, a heads up. So in order to choose one, you first of all need to know the uh, size. And I'm just going to remove that there. So you want to be uh, either measuring the end here or even inside there. I'm not going to measure inside there today because we know it's bent. And we're not looking for complete engineering accuracy. 15.80, so it's a 16 mil end. And the really important part with these uh, is the opposite end. Um, so you have to pay close attention to the setup here because um, you can get ones that are flat ended. Um, you can get ones like this that have, I'm trying to show you a bit closer. So this end link here, well this is all um, part of it, but you need to be measuring this across here. This gap here is going to determine what size of clasp that you require. Um, and in this case, once again, it's quite difficult to try and get it all on the in the shot. I'm only going to go for a sort of a roughish measurement. But it's 10 millimeters, isn't it? Let's face it. Uh, you get these in 10 mils, you get these in 8 mils. They come in all different types of sizes. But it's very important that you choose the right one or else it's not going to fit. So I'm going to cut away now to the, um, the screen grab of uh, all the different sort of ones you can buy and show you uh, a little bit more about them. Okay, here we are on the Cousins website and we need to go into this little category here, which is watch bracelets and fixtures or fittings. And in here, there's a whole array of stuff, uh, as you can see, uh, there's all the, uh, the pins and things, but we need to go into this section here, the clasps for watch bracelets. And there's a plethora of 
things to look at in here. These are all the different things that they show, look. So all the different types of ones, short, long, etc., etc. Uh, so not just the ones that I've just shown you, but many, many more. So just scroll through the page a little bit and uh, show you some of those. So you can familiarize yourselves because you'll recognize some of them for sure. Um, the first time I landed on this page, I found it a bit of a minefield to be honest with you. And perhaps that's why I'm making this video in the first place. Uh, now I'm gonna show you here some extenders, just while I can see them. Uh, these are really, really useful things. These are if you've got a bracelet that's not actually long enough. You can attach that to the end of the clasp and uh, you just choose the right uh, size again there, like 16 and 18 mil. And that will give you an extra 20 millimeters or so on the length of the strap, which is really, really useful. Certainly on vintage stuff like I collect. So we'll look at the type of ones that I've been uh, showing you. And we're gonna go into this one category here. They're really cheap, as you can see. You can buy expensive ones, by the way, but I found these cheap ones just good enough. Uh, this particular category is going to show us, I'll just find one to pick uh, here. So what we're looking at is a 16 mil and both widths are 16 mil. So that basically means that the end is 16 mil and the other end is also 16 mil. Uh, for, there, for those ones that don't have these sort of H-link like the digital watch I've just shown you. So we're going to find the ones that I need and um, they will be actually in the next bit. Now, obviously they're both marked exactly the same, threefold bracelets, so you've just got to do a bit of hunting really. And again, there's all the different sorts. And, uh, you know, 18 by 10. I don't need 18 by 10, do I? But um, it, there we go, just showing you there, it's 10 mil on the gap. So really, that is it. As I say, there's lots of different ones here you can look at, but that is how to choose, certainly on Cousins, or anywhere really, to choose the right one that you would need. Okay, so as if by magic, there is the one that I need. It's turned up, uh, 16 by 10. So we'll just take that out of the, the bag. And what we find is a plain new uh, clasp. It's usually quite stuck at the ends here because they're not fastened to anything. And typically for being on camera, it doesn't want to open. And of course you get this little um, pin as well, which is what you're going to need when it comes to fitting. So first of all, we need to remove the old one off the watch. So I'll show you how I do that. And I need, first of all, one of these. I'm not too sure what the name are and I need a little hammer and I need something like this or anything really that is the right diameter on the end. These, This came as a really, really cheap kit that I bought years and years ago, um, probably off eBay. And this is, you put your bracelet in here. So if I sort of line this one up for instance, so you can use it to take out links and things like that. So. The important thing actually with this is to make sure you're over the hole. You can see here I've battered the uh, middle of my hole. Uh, any hole or any slot will do uh, because obviously if you're trying to knock pins out, either whether you're changing uh, links out of bracelets or you're trying to do this, um, if you don't poke it through the hole, of course you'll be hitting it and what will happen is it'll just foul on the plastic and it won't do anything. Pretty self-explanatory, but believe it or not, I learned the hard way. Um, now I've actually cheated a little bit because I've started this one off because I didn't want to be fiddling around too much on camera because they're quite stubborn. That's not wanting to focus. So you can see it's just overhanging here. So it's a little pin and you need to sort of put it in, obviously in here. I've got this, that thing I showed you, this little tool, which is about the right diameter. This is actually for using um, to, to size uh, bracelets and things anyway, so it's ideal. Um, if you keep hitting it on one end and it doesn't actually come out a little bit or go through a little bit, then try and knock it on the other end. I've always suspected that these are tapered. However, the uh, one that we've bought would prove otherwise. I've measured that and that's not tapered at all. So I think it's just uh, perhaps the original manufacturer ones might be slightly tapered or perhaps they just hit it over the end with the hammer a bit and make it rounded so that it doesn't fall out. Um, so anyway, I'm waffling a little bit. 
obviously all we want to do is put that on top of there and then I need to give it some welly with a hammer until of course it's come free like so and there's the original which is actually also bent as you can see and it has got a lip on the top of that one I've not always seen that so it does uh, prove a bit of my theory um, that said this everything looks weird about this one um, it actually looks quite worn anyway that is now off so we have to now of course offer the new one up to the old one so obviously fitting is uh, exactly the same as removing just the opposite so uh, you will notice that we've got the size right there that fits in there quite nicely there's a little bit of play but then you know i'm always led to believe that they should be i guess if you were worried you could perhaps try and pinch that a little bit closer and um, typically ebay is going off in the background i don't know if you heard that uh, so we've got the split pin just going to try and put that a little bit in now i've just noticed actually on this that we have a bigger end and a smaller end so that's pretty obvious that you would put the pin in the bigger end uh, get it all the way through the links and then line it up probably with a bit of messing to get it to go through the smaller end and then that's what's going to hold it in place there's no as I say there's no um, chamfer on the end or anything like that to help it but then I have bought the £1.50 one there are some of these for £7.50 which say they're superior quality I guess they must be uh, for that sort of money and perhaps you get a little bit better um, but I'm doing it on the cheap so I'm just going to obviously line that in the hole offer the up to the bracelet and push that through and then once I'm happy with which I'm not happy there of course it's come over the top right realistically I should have took the um, the, the bracelet off the watch um, but I haven't and I'm just using a little bit of steel there to protect my mat and that is starting to go in and there we have it so that is now fitted nicely and of course it'll close nicely and all that's left to do really is to put the other one back in however for me uh, I want to keep the originality this is nice and shiny of course and new uh, the one that we took off where's that has is the got the Seiko uh, logo on it and in all my scrap parts I've got another one that's still a little bit rough in places but it's a lot better now it is slightly uh, longer but I don't think that's going to matter so I'm going to swap them over and see if it works it has in the past so let's hope it works uh, this time also okay I have now fitted that and there it is and uh, what it is when I try and close it, it closes really really firm which is nice but it's too firm and uh, as you can see it's quite hard to open so I just thought I'd just touch on that because I've seen this even with uh, normal watches that I've bought they're either usually too loose and um, the simple method for changing that is basically all it's biting is these sort of two tabs here and they grab around that bit there and obviously the it's a friction fit so it's just the pressure so I just take a pair of long nose pliers and I just want to move them out ever so slightly and then we should get a it's still quite tight <laughs> should get a better fit There we go. So 
so that's it that's the end of this video very very quick like i say it was just a quick how to uh, i figured it'd be worth doing so if you enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're new because i do plenty of uh how-to videos like this and uh, restoration projects which i know are much more popular than the how-to videos but there we go more videos are coming very very soon i'm actually working some on two at the moment in the background and um, they will be live on the channel very soon for the regulars who'll be watching this now of course if you're watching this in years time then that's slightly different but there we go so once again thank you very much for watching please leave your comments below because i read every single one of them and i'll try and answer as many as i possibly can don't forget to consider joining the facebook group uh, retro and vintage watches and restorations uh, it's a buzzing place there's nearly seven thousand members now and they're all like you and me are into watches and we like to either show our collections or we like to show our repairs or asking questions it's a really really good vibe in there really good community so i recommend joining that facebook group if you can so i'll see you all in the next video thanks very much for watching guys cheers